Sometimes we'll want to use what we see in a problem to help us make the best choice for a substitution of u. We'll often want to let u be some expression whose derivative also appears in the problem. You have to look carefully and think about the potential derivatives of the things that appear in the expression. And let's consider all possibilities. We're being asked to find the antiderivative of 2x over 1 plus x squared. There are many possible things that we could select to be represented by u. If we were to choose that 1 there, then we'd be talking about changing the expression into 2x over u plus x squared. This, I don't believe, simplifies it very well. If u is 1, then du would simply be 0. And we don't see a 0 in the problem. What if u was chosen to be 2x? That would make our problem into u over 1 plus x squared. It's a little better, but still pretty complicated. Our goal here is to simplify things, remember. Anyway, du would be 2dx if we had made that choice. Now what if we let u be x squared? Then we would have 2x over 1 plus u. du would become 2x dx. And finally, if u were to become 1 plus x squared, then we would change the expression into 2x over u. And du would also be 2x dx. Now let's remember that we are finding an antiderivative here. So whichever of these four choices we make is going to have a dx attached to it. Let's not forget that. And the question is, which of these choices is best? We're looking to get rid of x's as much as possible. And we also want to find where the derivative of the thing that we selected as u is also appearing in the integrand. So which of these choices seem like the best? It's a tough decision, but the last two especially catch my eye because Right here, we have 2x dx in the problem. That's what we need. And here as well. And the best choice, you may have guessed, is we want to let u equal 1 plus x squared. Let's see why it ultimately does get us to a better place than we would have had in the original. The original said, find the antiderivative of 2x over 1 plus x squared dx. Now simply letting u equal 1 plus x squared, that gets rid of our denominator, and that's great. But we still haven't gotten rid of the 2x dx. So how do we get rid of it eventually? We have to find the differential relationship between du and dx. If you do that, you get du equals 2x dx. And so see, that's why it's the magic combination, because the derivative here equals what appears in our problem. And so we can substitute du in for all that stuff.
And this is something we know how to integrate fairly easily. So uh, the antiderivative would have been ln u plus c. Lastly, we'll just put our original um, expression uh, in for the u. And it's done. Try this technique with 1 over x times ln x. See if you can identify what should be replaced with a u. The best choice for u here would be ln x. The reason why is ln x's derivative is also in the integrand. du equals 1 over x dx, and that is in the problem. It's right here. So we'll take ln x and we'll substitute in u in its place and put a du in its place. We'll get u du. Antiderivative is one half u squared plus c. And we'll just put the ln x back in. And we're done.